How's it going, everyone? This is Lewis Howes, and I want to talk about a recent post that Chris Brogan um, wrote about on his site, talking about how he is considering leaving LinkedIn. Now, I feel like this is a huge mistake, Chris, if you end up doing this, and I want to tell you um, a few reasons why I believe you should stay on, because I think it's going to really help you uh, achieve some of your business goals this year and in the years to come. Now, just to um, point out, he says that it's not because of anything LinkedIn has done wrong or um, you know bad against him or anything like that. It's because um, so many people are sending him requests for introductions. So number one, everyone, if you're listening to this, stop sending requests to be introduced to other people that Chris is connected to on LinkedIn. I'll talk about that at the end. But Chris, I'm going to talk about eight different reasons why I believe you should stay on LinkedIn. Number one, I'm going to kind of go through this fast. Google Juice, right? When you search your name on Google, okay, what's the things that come up? ChrisBrogan.com, obviously, um, Twitter, and then Friend Feed and LinkedIn, okay? So it's one of the top five or six things that shows up. Why is this important? Okay, this is important because when someone clicks on your LinkedIn profile, they see, they see that you have 147 recommendations, okay? Now that's extremely powerful, 147 recommendations. Now these are testimonials basically that you don't need to publish on your website, but that people have just done out of the kindness of their heart because of they believe in what you've done for them, right? So that adds a, a huge level of um, credibility, authority, and social proof for you, Chris, having all those recommendations. You wanna keep those recommendations. You don't wanna delete this and so people can't see who's recommending you, right? You wanna have these recommendations. It's extremely powerful for you and it helps you grow your business. Number three, build and manage a powerful database. You mentioned database and how email marketing is one of the most powerful resources for you. One of the most powerful things you do in your marketing right now is email marketing. I heard you talk about that at a speech in Ohio um, a couple months back. Now, let me just talk about um, why this is so powerful right now, building and managing your contacts on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a huge database of, oh, what, over 55 million business professionals, okay? Recently, they've updated this, this uh, platform right here where you can manage your contacts so much more effectively and efficiently, right? Now you can tag everyone. I can click on a name here, put this person in a category. I can add a tag. They're already in sports, right? I can add more tags if I want to, friends. I could put them in a city tag, whatever it may be. Now this is gonna be huge for you down the line to have this um, really categorized all your connections. So every time you're adding a new connection, you're gonna make sure you wanna tag these individuals. It's gonna allow you to send mass messages to people in serious tags, uh, cities, things like that, okay? So it's really, really important. The second part of this, I guess point number four is that you're able to export your contacts. Now, if you're using email marketing a lot in the future, which I know you're using it right now with your newsletter and it's helping thousands and thousands of people who read it every week, right? This is a way for you to build your database for the hopes that people would join your newsletter, okay? You can export all of your contacts into a CSV file. You can add that to your, your email marketing campaign, or at least you, what you could do is you could send everyone a message that you're connected to once a month or once every four months, right? And say, hey guys, we're connected on LinkedIn. I just wanted to give you a quick update about myself um, check out my blog. Here's a recent article I think you could find interesting. And also, if you want to be a member of my newsletter, feel free to subscribe here, right? Simple, easy way to build your database in your newsletter, okay? What's number four? Number five, I'm going to try to go through these a little quicker. Number five, driving traffic to your website. One of the things I want you to consider, Chris, is somehow including more status updates um, right here because it says one month ago was the last time you updated your status on LinkedIn. Now, I don't know if you're aware of this, but LinkedIn and Twitter have hooked up so you can actually tweet from Twitter and it'll post automatically to your, your LinkedIn status update. Now, if you're connected to, I think the last time we talked, Chris, you said you had about six or 8,000 connections. It's probably about 10,000 by now. That means that every time you posted a message on your status update on LinkedIn, it would go out to around 10,000 people's homepages and it would stay up there for a little longer than it would on Twitter, okay? So can take that into consideration that you wanna be able to, to drive traffic to your site using your status update. Also, you've got a great call to action right here um, on all three of your websites on LinkedIn. 
You've customized the links, so every time someone clicks on here, they know they're gonna get some type of information on social media strategy. So you're probably getting a lot of traffic um, just from people going to your profile here and clicking on this, right? You're getting free traffic, organic traffic, and you don't even have to be on LinkedIn yet. Another thing you've done is you've included the WordPress um, application, advanced application on LinkedIn. So every time someone clicks on this link, it goes right to your site, um, giving you another hit of traffic to your site, right? Bada bing, bada boom. The next thing. So you're driving lots of traffic to your website. Just take that into consideration. And for me, I probably get, um, I'm not sure how much traffic it gets on average every month, but it's usually in the top 10 things that drives traffic to my site. Now I'm using groups pretty aggressively and I've got some bigger groups on LinkedIn, which allows me to get a lot more organic traffic probably than, than you're able to, um, unless you have some groups. Number seven, um, <clears throat> actually number six, Something I want you to do, what you haven't done yet, is include your Twitter handle right here, at Chris Brogan. Now again, Twitter and LinkedIn have connected, and now you can, if you click on your profile, you'll see, let me just go to mine really quick and I'll show you, that I've got my Twitter handles down here. So people that go to my profile, they can click on my Twitter handles and follow me there. So if you really want people to follow you more on Twitter, then you can do that, okay? So make sure you go in there, just click on edit your profile and add a, at Chris Bogan right there. That is number <clears throat> six. Number seven, selling more books. Now you're obviously an intelligent person and you've added the Amazon reading list application to your LinkedIn profile. What this does is if you've also added your own book to the profile, that's great. That's what I did on mine as well. And all authors should add their own book. One is because they can read comments learn about the recommendations of the book by clicking on it. They can see there's 62 reviews, right? They can buy it on Kindle or they could go straight to Amazon and buy the book. This is going to allow you to sell more of your books, which is great, which everyone should pick up, by the way. Okay, so you're selling more books and you're not even doing anything. You just have the app on there, right? So number eight, um, there's a higher net worth of individuals on LinkedIn. Now, my recent stats show me that the average household income on LinkedIn is a nearly almost $108,000, whereas <clears throat> the average household income on, let's say, Facebook is roughly $81,000, okay? And LinkedIn is, has the highest average household income over all the, other, all the other traditional business sites. So WallStreetJournal.com, Forbes.com, BusinessWeek, NewYorkTimes.com, they're all around 100000 and less, whereas LinkedIn is about 108000 basically. And here's another cool stat. The percentage of business decision makers on LinkedIn is about 45%, whereas on Facebook, it's 26%. So the, the decision makers, the number of decision makers on LinkedIn is much greater than the other sites. So those are my, t I guess my eight ways. There's there's more reasons why I believe you should stay on LinkedIn, but those are kind of my eight, my eight main reasons why. And you ask, you know, what should you do? What should you do? Should you stay on LinkedIn? Should you delete your account? Because you're getting so many people that are connecting with you all over the place, right? You can't even manage it. All these different places, people are connecting with you. I just believe that LinkedIn is going to be so huge in the next couple of years. And it's going to allow you to manage your database, build your credibility, find new business, and just showcase all the things that you're currently doing. There's lots of things that I know you're doing out there through events, through consulting, speaking gigs. You're going to be able to get more of those opportunities through LinkedIn if you just manage it a little better and use it a little more effectively. So hopefully this um, video, Chris, gave you some insights on why I think you should be sticking with LinkedIn and giving it another go around. Maybe give it a few weeks where you're actually just testing and tweaking how you can manage your time on there a little effectively. And if you wanted to even put a message on or put a quick sentence, I guess, on your on your on your summary right down here. It says the first thing that says, please note with stars, a bunch of stars right here, right? Please note, due to the amount of connections that I have and the amount of people adding me to LinkedIn every day, I'm unable to forward uh, introductions to my contacts. I hope you understand this reason why, but if you wanna learn more about me, read below.
I think that could be a great segue from trying to trim back some of those people trying to get introduced through you. So Chris, hopefully this has been helpful for you as you have been a huge mentor to me over the last couple of years. And I know you help so many of us out there in the social media industry. So hopefully this is helpful. Please, please, please give LinkedIn uh, another shot. And uh, I think you'll see why it's going to be so valuable to your business.